took me three months to build a second seven-figure agency. Uh, I realized I didn't do it fast enough. But if you had a gun to your head and you needed to build a seven-figure agency in 30 days, what would you do? Would you survive? Recruiting CSMs that were real estate agents was a problem. So what did we do? We got rid of CSMs. I'm telling you what I would do to build a seven-figure agency in 30 days. Yo! All right, guys. I'm gonna do a special video right. for this person. Yo! Um, this person has changed my life. He's the reason most of us are here. He's been my business partner in two businesses now. One of those went not so well. We made a lot of money, though. Yeah, and then I had to do all the work. Um, the other one has done very well, and the way he views life, the way he views business is something very, very special, and I think that's going to pass on to you guys in the next hour. So, you guys all know this guy, let's give him a huge, warm welcome, warm round of applause, Mr. Gary Curry. Thanks, man. What's going on, guys? I have a question. So, don't be alarmed, uh, I'm completely sane. But if you had a gun to your head and you needed to build a seven-figure agency in 30 days, what would you do? Would, would you survive? Raise your hand if you think you could build a seven-figure agency if you had a gun to your head. <laughs> so Eric, just like we were talking about, if you had a gun to your head and you need, it's unloaded guys, but if you had a gun to your head and you needed to build a seven-figure painting company, could you do it? Now, for a lot of us, we have the wishful thinking, we're not gonna pass the gun around, <laughs> put the gun back. <laughs> There's a lot of wishful thinking out there and we like to think that we have the skill set, we are the person that we need to become. And when you're facing a life or death situation, oftentimes uh, some really cool things do happen. But I wanna make sure 100% with certainty, absolute certainty, that you guys have the skills needed to actually do it. So who wants to see what I would do to build a seven-figure agency. You know, actually, before I dive into that, let's just go ahead and get started. Money loves speed. So the first thing I want you guys to write down, money loves speed, write that down. So it took me 12 months to build a six-figure agency. It took me 13 months to build a seven-figure agency. It took me three months to build a second seven-figure agency. And I realized I didn't do it fast enough. Now, we heard about systems, we heard about client success, and those are all really good things. And I, I, I need to give you guys a fair warning. This presentation is going to lack systems. It's going to lack information about client success. I'm not talking about how to build an agency with absolutely no problems in the next 30 days. I'm talking about how to get to seven figures in 30 days because I genuinely believe a lot of you guys are in the day to day and you're looking at problems that aren't actually problems in your business and you're not solving the number one important problem that most of you guys are dealing with right now. Systems and client success is extremely important, but it makes no sense when you have no clients. And that's what I see a lot of agency owners do. Um, so that's what I wanna talk about. So moving on, I spent some time thinking and I'm not as cool as Jasmine. I don't have the clicker, it didn't work for me. And this is the result. <laughs> You guys ready? Go. Raise your hand if you're ready. Yeah. All right. This is the first thing I would start off with, OPM. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not, I'm not telling you guys to do this. I'm telling you what I would do to build a seven-figure agency in 30 days. So there's this word partition, and this has stuck out to me for a very, very long time, and I got it from the British Trading Company, um, the East India Trading Company, which is a British organization. It was one of the first public corporations in the entire world, and they have pretty much set the standard for modern day capitalism. They ruled way before America was even a country. We were ruled by, by the British Empire. They are the reason why Great Britain was able to colonize a, a mass ma uh, majority of the world, including India, and it's probably one of the most successful companies of that time. And this is something that I got from them. So partition. Partition is basically dividing things into parts. So all agreement was reached to partition the country. And I'll explain what that means a little bit further. The British East India Company had a philosophy. The entrepreneur that can create a partition between money and emotion will win. The entrepreneur that can create a partition between money and emotion will win. So Tesla, Apple, Amazon, what did they all have in common? It's funny, success leaves clues. A lot of the same words that were in Jasmine's presentation are also 
in mind. So the founders use leverage, AKA OPM, giving them the ability to think bigger, move faster, and focus on building a true business versus making a living. Who here feels like they're just basically working paycheck to paycheck. They're just grinding to make sure that they can pay their bills and have a little bit of money left over to invest back in their business. And they're really, a lot of the money that they're making from their agencies right now is covering their basic expenses, not leaving much room to actually grow the business. Anyone? I know that was me in the beginning. Okay. Okay. So if we move on to the next slide, this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Once again, this was also in Jasmine's slides. Jasmine, I promise I didn't copy this. I made this last night. Um, isn't that crazy though? Like Jasmine and I are literally talking about the same things. Isn't that wild? Success leaves clues. Keep thinking, keep remembering that throughout this entire uh, event, guys. So number one, physiological needs. So that's your water, that's like a roof over your hair, uh, head, air, you know, medical attention, basic things like that. And then your safety needs, right? So personal security, employment, resources, health. So the entrepreneur with the first two parts of the pyramid figured out versus the entrepreneur without it, who do you think will scale faster? And Brendan, can we go back to the other slide and I'll cover the, uh, the top three parts? Love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization. Those are the next three parts of the pyramid. Who here feels like they're maybe on the third part of the pyramid right now in their life and that they're still lacking on the top two? Anyone? Okay. Who feels like they're, they have the, the, the first two covered but they're lacking on the, the top three. I think that's a lot of us, to be honest with you. So Brandon, if we move on to, not this one, but the next one after that. Before I dive into this, who do you think is gonna move faster? The entrepreneur with the first two covered or the entrepreneur with all of them covered? It's a loaded question, right? So get an investor, 0% card, uh, line of credit, we were just talking about that, um, things like that. This is not financial advice. Once again, I am a fucking idiot. Do not listen to me. This is just what I would do. That, yeah, that's really what it is. So there's a term in accounting called basis. And basis basically is whatever you start off in a business. So for example, if let's say Vikram decides to start his agency, he puts $2,000 in for coaching, he puts another $1,000 into ads, his basis is $3,000 into his business. That's, that's how much he's basically invested in his business. Make sense? Cool. So if we move on for the next thing, for context, Matt and I, we acquired a state AI with no money down. So what is our basis? Our basis is zero, which has allowed us to create an infinite return on investment. For context, the state AI was already a six-figure agency when we acquired it. So that means we had no basis, we had no money in the deal. So there's something called the present value of money. And actually, this is a, this is a philosophy that I've practiced for a long, long time. I, you could call it leverage at the same time. Uh, Eddie Maloof made a video about this and I liked how he broke it down, which is present value of money. And basically what the present value of money, if you look at the just actual definition, is the concept that states an amount of money today is worth more than it'll be worth, let's say five years from now. And that's because of inflation um, and, and things like that, right? So in other words, um, money received in the future is not worth as much as an equal amount received today. So receiving $1,000 today is worth more than $1,000 will be tomorrow. Do you have a question? So what did this allow us to do by having basically no basis, an infinite return on investment? So we had an infinite return on investment and I never had to close a single deal in a state AI. To this day, I have never closed a single deal at a state AI. I have never managed the client at a state AI. I've talked to clients without me even knowing. We did a competition uh, for our clients and we gave them a one-on-one -on -one with me and I did not know. Thanks, Matt. That was, that was probably one of the only times I ever had to talk to a client and I never had to run ads from the agency. I have never done any of the actual agency work in, in the agency and that's because of this concept called leverage and having zero dollars in the deal but also leveraging OPM. And when we talk about OPM, I was also able to leverage OPT, other people's time. Right? We're not just leveraging OPM, we're leveraging OPT at the same time because it allowed us to hire day one. Because we had no money in, because Matt and I's basic needs were covered, because we didn't have to worry about putting money into the agency, the agency was already cash flowing. Or in other words, we, let's say we didn't have a cash flowing agency. We could have got a loan, we could have had a 0% car, we could have put everything on the Amex for the first 30 days. If you guys can't figure out how to make money in the agency in 30 days, then we have some bigger problems in the agency. 
In 30 days, you have an Amex, you sh there's no need to ever put money into the agency, period. So because we were able to hire from day one, leveraging OPM, um, we were able to build up a sales team, hire account managers, hire media buyers, get the team that we needed in so that we would be able to scale as quickly as possible. So we were able to run ads from day one and we were able to move with strategy like the great boxing legend Muhammad Ali says, we're able to move with strategy and not with emotion. So we're able to have a runway long enough. Who here feels like they have a long enough runway? Okay. Who here feels like their runway is a little short and sometimes when you're about to take off, I'm starting to get my pilot's license right now, so this is a cool analogy. Like you feel like you're about to take off and, and you don't have enough airspeed and you actually just go through the trees that are at the end of the runway. Who feels like that's kind of where they're at right now? Anyone? So we were able to have a long enough runway where we could test, we could optimize, and we could invest that aggressively into the business. So the next thing is niche. So we talked about OPM, now we're gonna go into niche. Does that, make, does that make sense, by the way, guys, about OPM? What's the question I'm supposed to ask, Jacob? Instead of, does that make sense? Yeah, am I explaining that okay? Am I, am I explaining that okay? Cool. That way, you fuck it up, you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I need to remember that, I need to remember that. So we have OPM, right? You can get OPM through 0%. You can acquire a cash flowing agency that is already producing, guys, I promise you, you could do that with no money in the deal. There are skills that you guys are really good at. For us, Matt and I, we just knew how to run agencies. The person we acquired it from didn't, he, 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 he needed more time in the space to get the experience that he needed. And we were able to come in here, show him that we could scale the agency up with no money into the deal ourselves. He would just leverage our skill sets. So for me, if I needed to build an agency to seven figures in 30 days, I would start off with OPM, I would start off with niche, and I would choose a niche with a total adjustable market of at least 500,000 people or more. High LTV and AOV. So for example, real estate, it has an extremely high AOV. LTV, I mean, people are gonna probably buy or sell a home, what is it, three times in their lifetime? So about three times in their lifetime, let's say the average transaction or commission is gonna be $8,000 per transaction. That's about a $24,000 LTV, and then the AOV is gonna be $8,000 per deal because that's the average commission. So, just for clarity, you're saying high LTV, high AOV for the client service? For the client, 100%, for the client service. Not the gems. Gems can have a high LTV, okay. and the AOVs can also be, they can be pretty high. Okay. Most gems aren't, right? I'm talking like boutique gems, you'll have a higher LTV, a higher AOV, but just most gems don't operate that way. So the ability, like for example, gyms, you can sell them supplements, personal training, there's so many things. You can upsell them to increase that LTV and that AOV. So the ability to generate quick wins, something that Jasmine also talked about. You guys need to generate quick, a, a niche where you can generate quick wins. And quite frankly, for the longest time, I did not think real estate was a niche you could generate quick wins because the average trans transaction time is gonna take anywhere from two to three months. Uh, but the reality of the situation, it's not. For example, in our niche or in our agency, we brought on a tax consultant and literally on that call, we had clients saying this one call paid for the entire program because it saved them more in taxes than the program actually cost them. So there are, even in a niche with a longer sales cycle, you can generate them quick wins. You can generate quick wins in any niche, no matter what. So ability to generate quick wins that pays for the program within 72 hours. Database reactivation is something that's great for the gym space. That's actually good in a lot of niches. Um, a Google review campaign that can get them a ton of reviews. Uh, there's so many quick wins that you guys can do. And the bonus is B2B versus B2S. Example, realtors are B2S 100%. They are solopreneurs and car dealers, they are definitely B2B. So I would prefer a niche that is more B2B because I'll be able to talk their lingo, I'll be able to solve more complex problems, and I'm not dealing with as much mindset stuff that I need to work on. For example, with realtors, they have a lot of limiting beliefs and a lot of mindset issues that you have to kind of overcome with a car dealer who has $12 million in inventory on his lot, uh, you know, he's, he, he's, they, they have the balls, you know, a realtor necessarily does not. So there's only two things that matter in a startup. The, and Matt says this quote a lot, is the size of the market and the quality of the team. This is Richard uh, Barton. He is one of the founders of Zillow. And this quote has stuck out to us. So the exact steps I would take to build a seven figure agency is OPM and niche. Right. Keep in mind that quote that I just said, the two most important things is the size of the market and the quality of the team. So OPM in a niche.
So we've covered the size of the market. Let's talk about the quality of the team. Question? Other people's money. So we've covered the size of the market. Let's talk about the quality of the team. And this is the third step, is a recruiter. So if you guys are jotting it down, number one should be OPM, number two should be niche, number three should be recruiter. Who thinks they can build a seven-figure agency without a seven-figure team? Anyone? You can do it by yourself. I know Dave's trying to, build, trying to do it by himself, but who, who, who actually thinks they could do it themselves? Anyone? I didn't think so. So this is my team breakdown for a seven-figure agency. This is what I would do to have a seven-figure agency from day one to the last day, the 30th day. This is what it would, I think it would take for me to do it. Five closers, three setters, two MDRs, so those are marketing development reps, they're handling your inbound leads, and then I would have one sales coordinator. I'll explain what a sales coordinator does in a second. So five closers, three setters, one media buyer, one CSM, and one executive assistant. That is my team size. So my revenue per head is gonna be pretty, pretty solid in the beginning, all right? Five closers, you're gonna have at least 150 initial interviews. 150 initial interviews to find five good closers. I'm not bringing in the 18 year old that just wants to make a lot of money and saw an ad from Cole Gordon. Right? I'm bringing in people that know what they're doing, they've been in the space, and they have a certain standard. They're used to making $10,000, $15,000 a month, and if they go anything below that, then it's gonna freak them out, so they're gonna figure out a way to make $10,000, $15,000 a month. Those are the people that I want on my sales team personally. Other people have different preferences, that's what I'm looking for. Three setters, that's gonna take me 90 initial interviews. Right, To find one good candidate, I'm gonna need probably about 30 initial interviews. One media buyer. That's probably gonna take me anywhere from 20 to 30 interviews. Uh, one CSM, that's gonna take me another 20 to 30 interviews. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of these team members, they will churn out after uh, a period of time because this is your starting team. The people that you start with, I think from when we acquired a state AI, we probably have two of the original team members uh, still with us today. There are people that are gonna get you to seven figures, they're not gonna get you to eight figures. Total interviews, through, and once again, this is speed, guys. I'm not saying this is the most efficient way. I'm not saying this is the systematic approach. This is the speed approach that's gonna make sure that you actually take action, because that's what so many of us are lacking. We're not taking enough action. So total interviews, 320 interviews. That does not include mock calls. That does not include quality control interviews. Those are just initial interviews. That's not reviewing applications. That's not finding candidates to apply. How are you gonna build a seven-figure agency in 30 days if you have 320 interviews? Literally, you're gonna be spending all your time just interviewing. So that's why you need a recruiter. <laughs> so as of now, I've only used Jace Gray for higher level positions. So that's account management and sales. And then I use Omir uh, with Fava for any entry level position, such as like an executive assistant or a media buyer, for example. So the exact steps I would take, once again, OPM, niche, and a recruiter. So attention is the new oil. It is the scarcest resource we have. Uh, this is one of the most interesting Alex Hermosi quotes that honestly that stuck with me for a very long period of time. The average CPM on Facebook is $7.19. Keep that in mind, $7.19. That's the cost to reach 1,000 people. 1,000 cold calls at three minutes would take 50 hours. A cold caller in the Philippines would cost you $3 an hour and that's kind of cheap. And honestly, you're not gonna get good quality out of that. That's gonna cost you $150. $150, that's the organic approach. Versus $7.15, I'm gonna reach the same amount of people. Paid ads is the quickest and most efficient way to get attention as of 2023 if you're trying to scale fast. If you're trying to scale fast. And I'm gonna break down fast versus slow and why I think it's a better approach than, than taking your time. Uh, and it really comes down to, you're gonna make the mistakes anyways, you might as well fail fast and, and learn as much as you can. Um, so you're not in it for years and years and years and you're making the mistakes that you could have made in the first six months and you're making them two years in. So I would not run them by myself. Uh, I would hire an agency like Brandon Spears or the agency engineer. Those are the top two people in the space that I know of that would run ads. Brandon's here, I would definitely talk to him. Uh, if you guys are running paid ads, I would have him look at your accounts and audit them. Why? If you didn't know how to drill for oil, would you waste your finite resource trying to do it yourself? If attention is our scarcest resource, just like oil is, why are we gonna try to fuck it up when we don't have that much? You don't have that much money, even though you're using OPM. You don't have that much time because you have to do it in 30 days and your attention can honestly, just, you can lose it all. You can saturate the market. So daily ad consumptions, I'm not sure if you guys can see that number, but it's 146 adverts a day. That's what people are seeing every single day right now. 
146. Yeah. This is this is daily ad ad consumption. Some some studies show 10,000. I think that's if you're looking at billboards, TV commercials, things like that. I'm talking about uh, pieces of content on on digital, YouTube ads, um, scrolling through social media, branding stuff like that. Since attention is scarce, how do you run ads so that you don't waste the resource? The creative in the offer. This is the biggest thing. The creative in the offer. Who here has seen one of our videos? One of our ads? Most of you. Okay, cool. So, what do you think about them? Super creative. Really yeah, very different and crazy. Different. Creative. Crazy. Keep that in mind. Who knows what our actual offer is? Yo, what's the original offer? What? Ten listing appointments, three tra three guaranteed appointments, free something. Who knows what our actual offer is? Anyone? No, that's because you, you study this shit. So the market has become so sophisticated, guys, that your guarantee of ten more deals than your competitor, it doesn't matter. It's not going to make a difference. There's so many agency owner, agencies out there that they just try to one up us. So if we guarantee ten, they're going to guarantee twenty. And the next person is going to guarantee 30. The market's so sophisticated, they can see right through that. It's not going to make a difference. That's not the thing. Stop running the same offer everyone else is running, especially if you're trying to scale to seven figures and 30 days. You don't need a better offer. You just need a different one. We did not have the best offer when we acquired a city. I, I still, to this day, don't believe we did. I still don't think we have the best offer right now. We don't need the best offer. We need a different offer. So I'm going to take it a step further. You don't need a better offer. You need better creatives. None of you guys got our guarantee right, besides Brandon, but he's, he's a nerd. He studies our ad library probably all the time. No one remembers what we actually said in the ad. They just remember the ad itself. This is Yanko's face right now. We're talking about creative. You just need better creatives. If you guys need better creatives, you can talk to Yanko. <laughs> now you're good. You can go now. So I don't believe Estadia has the best offer, but we do have the best creatives. And I can't funnel hack any of our competitors or anyone in the agency game because the creatives are pretty crappy. The creatives are pretty crappy. You're not gonna get attention running ads like this. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> 10 chiropractor patients guaranteed or your money back. The market has become so sophisticated. My good friend Joe Kaplan just gave away the original 7FA course. You guys do not wanna run ads like this ever again. Please, I, you, will, you will be ripped apart. You will be ripped apart. Let me know if you see the difference from that ad and this one. I mean Realtors, Zillow is dead, and I'm gonna share with you in the next 60 seconds what agents are flocking to, and it's called Operation Blackhawk, and this is the same technology. Okay, so basically I popped out of a casket, right? Who cares what I said? You saw what I did. I popped out of a casket. How is that gonna make a difference first? That and the basic 1080 by 1080 image that I literally just made on Canva last night. Huge, huge difference. So the next slide, I genuinely believe, so I genuinely believe that you all run crappy ads because you just haven't seen enough of the good ones that convert. So what I'm gonna do right now is show you the ads that are getting us a 12 to 18 extra rise. These are our best performing ads. We have ads that get way lower than that and we test a lot of stuff, but these are our best ones. They get around a 12 to 18 X ROAS. If you're a real estate agent, I need you to listen up. This is going to be the number one offer to help you grow your business, and I can promise you, you will never see this video again. In fact, if you do see this video again, I will send you $100 of my own money just to prove that I'm serious. I can't disclose too much about this offer because logistically, it's not actually possible for us to fulfill so many people on this offer. We're talking something that will literally change the trajectory of your business forever. I need you to take a leap of faith in me. so well this is for the real estate agents that's sick and tired of overpaying for marketing that doesn't work at all so you rely on zillow referrals and cold calls ew yeah i know how that feels when agencies promise you that they gonna bring you deals and then they don't then i say i need to talk they say what for where's my lead oh you need to spend more what they're just in it for the dollar sign i need someone to bring me leads that are qualified oh 
Let me tell ya, I know someone that won't just sell ya, but help ya. It's called the Black Hawk System. They guarantee pin listing appointments, so it's free. If anybody out there's looking for me, let them know I'm over here. I'm getting leads. This is for the real estate agent that's ready to start saying, I'm getting leads. If we don't do what we say we're gonna do, then we'll pay you. Black Hawk System will change your life. Let us double your GCI. We got what you want. We got what you need. Let us do what we do or it's free. If you're looking for me, I'm getting leads. The real estate AI.com. I'm getting leads. Attention. This video went viral. Um, we don't do any organic. We've created a brand in this space because of our pay traffic and our ads. That's organic enough. This is, and once again, guys, I'm showing you this because you need to understand what good creators look like. Realtors, stop scrolling, stop scrolling. Listen up, if you're still trying to grow your real estate business without relying on Facebook ads, referrals, and Zillow, then I need you guys to pay attention for the next 30 seconds, right? Because our client, Sean here, just got $345,000 worth of commissions in his pipeline with 92 people that are actually looking to sell their homes, right? I'm gonna show some- There we go. All right. What'd you say? <laughs> so, this is, once again, the exact steps that I would take. Number one, OPM. Number two, uh, niche. Number three, recruiter. And number four, irresistible offer and paid ads. That's actually the most important thing. Paid ads, videos. And your irresistible offer doesn't need to be better. It needs to be different. So let me know. We can play this, Brent. It's a video. Welcome to the Carnival 30-minute tour. Hey, Shaq. It's a 30-second tour. No, oh, man, it's like... And now it's 26. Welcome aboard! Ocean! Skyride! Mini golf. Relax, relax, relax! You take this man to be your husband? I do. Married. <laughs> okay, sorry, go forward twice. My bad. Okay, cool. So, social proof is not for your clients, it's for your team. So, does anyone think Shaq got paid for that? You think he did it for free? So, this is the next thing I would do in the agency. And it's actually the same thing we did in the state AI. This is a hidden secret, uh, but I'm gonna tell you guys. Hire actors in the beginning to talk about your agencies. They don't need to say that they work with your agencies, but to talk about your agency. What does your agency do? What do they guarantee? What do they offer? Have someone besides you talking about your product. Um, as a form of social proof, you can hire these people from Fiverr, Upwork, and my personal favorite is Cameo, because you can get celebrities doing it, right? What's the difference between CVS, Carnival Cruise Lines, Apple, having celebrity endorsements, and you? Everyone always, whenever I tell people that, they're like, you paid someone to say something about your company? Guys, we see it on TV commercials all the time. What's the difference? Why aren't you doing it? If nine-figure companies are doing it, what's stopping you? So, for example, this is Trady Tudor from Million Dollar Listings. We paid her to say things about our company. She didn't say she worked with us. She just talked about what we did, and this video crushed in the beginning. And most importantly, it got our team uh, to a point where, our sales team primarily, a point to where they weren't worried about if someone asked us, hey, do you have social proof? Can someone say anything good about you? Because we had, if Brandon, if you go to the next slide, I think one more. Morning, everybody. I just wanted to give a big shout out to Jared and Matt at Estate AI for all. Cool, because we have an entire wall of testimonials and we had that from day one in the agency. An entire wall of testimonials that we were able to leverage and show to the world to give us the credibility that we needed. We knew how to run an agency. We knew that we could deliver and we knew that if we had any problems that we could and would figure it out. So we weren't worried about that. Now, you guys should add a disclaimer that they're um, paid uh, actors. I would do that. Um, so, yeah, just throwing it out there. So, OPM, niche, recruiter, irresistible offer, and social proof. Those are the first five steps so far. We don't run images. If you go through our ad library, we barely have images. All of our ads are high production videos, all videos. The only, all of our ads that, that convert are always videos. The images do okay, as long as they're in KPI, we do keep them, 
but for the most part, the, the ones, we've never had an image outperform any one of our videos. We've never had a basic video uh, outperform any one of our videos, like a boring video of someone just talking about the, about the product. It's always hype, and we always pay, we pay Huey. I don't know if you guys know Huey. He uh, edits all of our ads and he does an amazing job. He truly understands how to edit ads. A lot of editors, they make ads look cool and pretty and there's like these long transitions, but that doesn't keep people's attention. Huey does an amazing job. He adds like uh, timestamps, like the ad will turn off in XYZ amount of time, like crazy memes. It, it's awesome. He does an amazing job at it. So all of our ads are, are pretty much like that. So we have two different campaign structures. We have our scaling campaign and then we have our sandbox. So we, we don't use CBO, um, we just, every ad has its own budget, so to answer your question, yeah, they, it's, it's basically just, they're, so it's, it's, it's free for all. Small, uh, instead of letting the platform dictate where they're going to be placed in, I'll give each ad the same amount of money. Yeah, and that's exactly what we do, right? They each have their own budget. Yeah, and then like you trend, you see a shit close, and then that's the one that you end up going to place in. 100%. Yeah, yeah. Next thing is expectations and client success. You do need a slide on this, but I would honestly use leverage and have Jasmine train your CSM. That's what I would do. Um, I'm not gonna get into the day-to-day -day of that. I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna empower my uh, CSM to fail, um, and I'm going to uh, really uh, just let them take over that entire area, because that's not gonna be my area of expertise. I'm focused on building this agency to seven figures in 30 days. So expectation deck and copy and paste ads. That's what the fulfillment will look like. Everything is copy and paste. So I wouldn't do any custom work at all. Everything is gonna be the same ad, the same funnel, the same creative, everything is the same. And then we're gonna set really, really strong expectations with our clients um, on the things they need to do to succeed. It's not on us, it's on them. And they're responsible for their own success. So timeline, once again, OPM is gonna be the first day. Niche is gonna be the first day. You're gonna do all this stuff the first day. Your recruiter is gonna be the first day. Irres irresistible offer is gonna be the first day. You're gonna do your offer and your paid ads one to three days. Pay your editor extra to expedite it. Social proof, one to two days. And then ruthless expectations and copy and paste fulfillment, you're gonna start doing that when you close your first client. Um, or when you onboard your first CS. Guys, that is how I would build a seven figure agency in 30 days. As you can see, every single step I'm doing within the first probably three days, I don't think anything goes ahead of that. There was no reason why it took us three months to build a state AI to 100K a month. There's no reason. We should have done it, we should have did it in 30 days. Matt and I were talking, we could have done it in two weeks. You're not moving fast enough. No one here is moving fast enough. You can move way faster. What's your question? We we didn't we didn't buy it. I mean we didn't we didn't pay for it. it was, there was no cat. We we used no cash to, to acquire the agency. Is that like 15k a month? Is it 15k? It's 15 and 17k. Cool. Questions, guys. This is the time for questions. I think that's the last slide, right? Go ahead. Paid in full. that 6k up front now you can go pay a recruiter 5k to find another closer but if you only pay if you only got paid 1500 up front it's not enough leverage to pay a recruiter to pay joey yak to make more amazing videos for you so you, you get that money and speed like jared said in the beginning so charge the piff up front and then just reinvest all of that back in faster i'll take more piffs at less ltv in the short term so we can scale faster than hot just more retainers and more volume so I think it's a good So if you guys are in industries where there's a retail cycle, mattresses, furniture stores, bars, um, gyms, if you're on a media company and you want to sell this, do it at, at busy times during their sales cycle. Yeah. They'll be cash flush, and they'll be totally okay with cutting you a check for a year's worth of ads, and you don't have to chase them for that money during down months because they've already made it. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. That's, that's when we started doing this was right after real estate hot season. And it did before we started this. Yeah, people do that in gym is super common. Yeah. They'll, they'll run their PT pitch shit at tax time. Yeah. Because people have it. And it's mm. new year, new meeting. So. That makes a lot of sense. Who else has some questions, guys? You guys offer third party financing for your pitch? Yes. Who else has questions? 
Do we offer third party financing? How often, what's your opt on that? We, we, don't, we don't push it that much. We don't get that many broke realtors anymore. We triage that. That goes back to the sales coordinator that I would have. Because you have five closers, there's gonna be so much traffic coming in. Because you're in a niche with 500 people, you're not gonna do that much quality control in the beginning because you don't want your cost per book calls to skyrocket. In the beginning, our cost per book call was literally 15, 20 bucks to book a call. Now it's like in the, like 100 and something. But that's because we've increased quality dramatically. Our ROAS has gone up. We are more efficient now. Uh, but in the beginning, I would just do a big volume game, have your sales coordinator triage appointments and make sure that your closers are getting the best of the best. But at the same time, you're spending the least amount of money to do so. You're just paying a, a sales coordinator 3K uh, to do that versus your cost per book call going up five times. And when you're trying to fill up five closers calendars, which you need five appointments a day minimum, and that's live calls. So that means you need 25 live calls a day for those five closers. So if you have a show rate of 50%, you actually need 50 scheduled calls on the calendar a day. How much is that gonna cost you? That's why we use leverage. That's why we use other people's money. Any other questions, guys? Yeah. What would you do differently to do it in a month or two weeks that you didn't do in the start? I would have built up the sales team faster. We took way too long to do it. I don't know what that was. Or what the hesitant. The there, there was no bottleneck. We just, it, the bottleneck was us. We, we just didn't take action. We should have just did it. There was no reason not to. Even if you didn't have the appointments? Well, we had the appointments. Yeah, we had the appointments. That wasn't the problem. It, it was ourselves. We didn't. We just didn't do it. We didn't move fast enough. It's fifteen to twenty dollars. Yeah. Who's it? It's a hundred and a hundred, basically. Yep. Beefed up our quality big time. <laughs> Yeah, but how many, yeah, but 87% uh, of them spend 113% of their income. Yeah. Jared, what's the mindset that goes into doing this so fast? Because I feel like a lot of, like, this makes so much sense, and we can look back on it and it looks super simple, and it is. But, like, I feel like there's so many beliefs that need to be broken in order to really actually achieve something like this. So, like, what's the mindset? that you would have now if you were doing this again versus if you tried this a year ago? Like, how should people try to really think about this if they want to go make a massive play with this? If you had a gun to your head and you need to build an agency mm -hmm. to seven figures in 30 days, could you do it? That's the mindset. Fuck it, yeah. Okay. Fuck it. We're doing this. You don't think about it. So this is something that not a lot of people know about me. Not a lot. I don't really share it. But I am a reserve police officer in New Jersey. So I volunteer my time for free uh, in my local community. I went through the police academy. And that's one of the first things they, they teach you in the academy. I, I did it for a big reason was to go through the academy. Robert Kiyosaki was a Marine. The reason why he became a Marine was to develop discipline. The reason I went through the academy was number one, to develop discipline, but also to realize that you have to be able to make decisions without thinking and without being scared. That's how you're going to really perform as an entrepreneur. So in the academy, they teach you how to think without, well, they, they teach you how to just do rather than think. They'll pepper spray you. They'll play loud noises. Um, and you have to figure out what to do in those situations. You have to think extremely quickly. I've been in a lot of situations where I just have to think. I, I can't think. You just have to do. You just have to take action. Same exact thing with business. You can't think. Just do it. It's life or death. I have to to get to seven figures in 30 days. This is my deadline. So I was watching a video from Layla Hermosi because I've been thinking a lot about what it takes to go from seven figures to eight figures um, as we go in this process of selling a Stadia. One of the things that I've been studying is once again, how to scale to eight figures. And one thing that Layla Hermosi says is when people are scaling to seven figures, they're always trying to solve a lot of problems that aren't actually problems or aren't the most important problems. And that's the biggest, biggest bottleneck. They need to just once again, take more action and create more problems. Because most of the problems that you're dealing with, they're not problems. I was talking to Alex, Alex lives in Jersey, and we were 
uh, at dinner, him and Vikram, and I just basically told him, we just, if, if there's a problem in our agency, we just eliminate it from being a problem. So for example, CSMs were a problem. Recruiting CSMs that were real estate agents was a problem. So what do we do? We got rid of CSMs. We just got rid of the problems that we were creating. And yes, it will create more problems, and then you just get rid of those. But at the end of the day, you're focused on the most important thing. And, and here's another thing, guys. When you guys sell your agency, let's talk about valuations of business. Or from our buyer that's buying our agency, he has yet to ask us about churn, about systems, about ops. The only thing they have reviewed is profit and revenue. That's the only thing they care about. That is the North Star metric in business, depending on your goals, right? Depending on where you're trying to go. Am I explaining that correctly? Any other questions, guys? With your idea creation process, this is a question for both of you guys, uh, with like the polarization, like just trying to create the most crazy shit ever, like I don't you come up with ideas. How do you, how do you actually like plan them out for the people that are going to be involved in making that video? So I just, a lot of the ads, like for me, like for example, popping out of the casket. I just saw a casket and I decided to make an ad out of it. So a lot of the ads that I do, it's me driving around, I'm doing nothing, I'm like, that would be a fire ad, and I just do it. How do I get people's attention? That's the question. All of you should be able to use this house to make an ad. 100%. I, I jumped out of a plane, I made it into an ad. There's so many things and, and crazy stuff that you can do on a daily basis, you could just make an ad out. There's another thought process, if you're not a creative person, I think Picasso said, good artists create, great artists steal. So like, we have a lot of ads that we've stolen. Also, another thing, you just, you, you guys are at a, Alex, you guys are at a great point where you can just pay Joey if you can't think of something. Just hire Joey, have him make ads for you. Yeah, you're to start too, for free. Oh, awesome. To try to get our business. Yeah, yeah. Cool, guys, I probably have time for a couple more questions. Anyone else have any? So, recruiter, right, you, how much depends on recruiter? Like, it depends on the position. Um, we get a really good deal because I was Jace's first client ever. Um, I think for a salesperson, it's like 3K, I think. They do the, they do the, they, they wean it down to the right candidates so that we have to do way less initial interviews, yes. So what, what do you give them? What are your qualification factors? You'll break down and say, hey, this person has to meet this requirement, they have to be this type of For me, for sales, I need someone who is used to making at least 100K, if ideally more, like 150K a year. Uh, and he'll find them. And they, and, they, and they are used to high ticket sales, like an online sales environment, because corporate sales is totally different from online high ticket sales, totally different. I don't hire corporate sales people. We do have, we have one CSO CSRs. and CSRs. You paid a recruiter to find that person as well? Yeah. We pay on nearly 1500 bucks to find Every, every position is normally through a recruiter. That's the most effective way to go. Yeah.